For this variation, we're going to make an inside out tacket stitch. We've been sewing into the signature so that the tacketed area appears on the, on the outside spine, but this time we're going to sew out of the signature like so and leave, leave tying space at the end. And I'm going to set little beads onto this. So I'm just going to fill up my needle with beads. Okay, I've got four, let's put a couple more beads on this needle and just tug them down. Again, you need to check carefully. Oops, that one didn't go down. So let's get rid of him and hopefully I won't have any more troubles. Just keep picking up beads. If anything doesn't go down, just put it aside. Most of these are pretty good. These, again, are those E beads. I specified the size in the syllabus. You, you will find that some of them just don't go down now, in which case, just put the bead aside. So let's get a bunch of beads here. I want just a beaded... I think, oh, I can fit one more on there. And of course, these can be any kind of beads that you'd like, as long as the needle will accept the hole. Hmm. Running into some troubles here. Or, let's see, that looks big. Good. Okay. So now I have a string of beads and you can create a pattern with this, anything that you would like. And that just adds a little jazz. And I'm going to enter the signature at this point. Pull things nice and snug. And then let's turn that signature around to the inside. And we're going to go ahead and tack it on the inside this time. It could even be um, just tied off, but um, just a couple of stitches might be nice on the inside. And I'm just going to, I have one needle here. So I'm just going to go under one more time. And then you simply very carefully put your dot of glue along that. And you have trim off your ends. And again, these can be frayed, which is fun. And there you have another little tiny book. And all of these variations can be used on your large book. That's why I'm adding them here, um, because they can, all these variations, try them out on your large book. Let's try another one. Okay, so I have another small signature here, and I'm just going to make this cute little button tacket on that. This is pretty simple. There's a trick because you don't want to tear your paper. It would work great with um fabric paper. So um, I've folded it, laid the button. I have a two-hole button here. I think it's a baby button or a shoe button or something. And just mark on either side of the button. Now we're going to go in just a little bit from that first mark on the right. And Put a hole there. Again, I'm eyeballing all of this in terms of placement on the spine. Little hole there. Make sure you don't make these holes too large because you don't want it, the paper to rip or tear along that spine there. Okay, um, I've got my thread and my needle, 
and let's come in, let's exit for this one. And once I've got that needle out, I'm going to thread through the hole in my button and thread back out the hole in my button. I mean, this is pretty much like sewing on a button. It's, it's just a question of the placement of your um, piercing station so that you don't tear that paper or use cloth or somehow, you know, one of the fabric paper. And there you have it. And then we'll tack it off on the inside again. Really cute. I love the little buttons. I can see I can see how cute this would be. I'm just going to grab a piece of paper. I could see how cute this would be as a spine if you did, pretend that's the spine, if you did buttons at the top and then maybe a long tacketed beaded stitch. A lot of beads on there. And then buttons at the bottom. That would be really a cute idea for a spine. Well, let's get back to where I was. <laughs> oh, ideas just come to me. Okay, so we're just going to tack it that off in the usual way. A couple of stitches through and then a little bit of, tiny bit of glue. Trim off your edges and you could even trim off your edges really long and untwist this. And this is where you can get really creative with the tacket stitch can be that funny noise is uh, Teddy the cat playing with my curtain for who knows why he's doing that but anyway you can tack it that off and it's actually could come running down you could throw a couple beads on that and there's just so many possibilities with this stitch which is why I love it so much. We're going to do the tack in a, um, the button tacket in a slightly different way. Okay, so here I have um, my paper. I'm going to fold it again, same as I did before. And I'm going to fold it down. And again, I'll put this in the center for you lay those holes right on the center spine mark same thing we did before and then <coughs> oh excuse me my allergies are really bad right now okay then we're going to pierce and remember to pierce just inside of those lines but leaving as much space as you can between the trick is to leave enough space so that it won't tear the paper but not so much that it will show the stitch you don't really want the stitch to show so um, this time we're going to we're going to sometimes I get a bit confused here okay we're going to go into the stitch because we want the ends to be on the outside and then out of the stitch. You only need a little bit of thread for this particular stitch. Let's see, where's, there we go. Oops, my button fell off. Hey, so goes it. Okay. And then take your needle through the other hole in that button, pull it tightly, and tie, or tack it, whichever you prefer. You can stick a couple tackets in there, or I'm just going to leave it. You could even just knot this off. and leave it be. It's awfully cute looking. I see I made this a little, I'm just going to nudge this up a little bit in between those two holes. 
um, optimally it will hide the button itself will hide the holes and um, this is this obviously is kind of odd it would look much better on a spine that is either the same size as or larger than the button but just for demo's sake let's just do that and then um, I'm just going to take this so I'm going to leave the needle in here and um, we can just throw some more beads on onto that thread before we cut it. So let's just just grab in some beads here and get that out of the way and make sure if I can find the biggest one here. That can be the most frustrating thing about this whole process is finding the beads that are the hole is the right size. So, but you get the idea. Check your beads before okay. So you could put a string or three or different sized beads on here. Pull the and out and then just tie tie this off so that the beads can wander up and down and the trick here again is to place that loop where in the position you want it to be hold it gently and then pull that's going to give you a loop that will be under your control. Okay, so you could, I would definitely have put more beads on that.